on the Hawkeye Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast, brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy, Atlantic Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Iowa's Corn Farmers, Quick Star, Green State Credit Union, Marco, and by Extreme from Mediacom. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to this week's Fight for Iowa podcast. I'm Gary Dolphin with the Hawkeye Radio Network. We are rushing through May with many questions regarding Hawkeye athletics as it pertains to the coronavirus pandemic. You will hear from Iowa Athletic Director Gary Barta after this important message from our sponsors. More Fight for Iowa after this. We're living certainly in uncertain times, but know that as Iowa's corn farmers get ready for spring planting, we remain optimistic that their crops will grow to feed livestock, fuel your vehicle with ethanol, and be part of over 4,000 products that we use every day. The Iowa corn farmer plays a vital role in our state, and we're proud to call Iowa home. You might think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Athletico Physical Therapy remains open to safely provide physical and occupational therapy treatment options in clinic and online during COVID-19. Delaying treatment could mean additional expenses and prolonged pain. Visit athletico.com. Request an appointment in clinic or virtually through a secure online video chat via FaceTime or Zoom and start feeling better tomorrow. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. With Memorial Day fast approaching, an important date, June 1st, looms for Iowa and the rest of the Big Ten. Will students and athletes be allowed back on campus for the first time since mid-March? Iowa Athletic Director Gary Barta updates us. So what, what June 1st means right now is that you know none of our campuses are open. So there's not an ability to have uh, required team activity anyway, certainly not in person, but there's no, no team required team activity can occur in the big 10 by any team, any sport until June 1st. Now, June 1st doesn't mean we've figured something out and we know that, you know, everything's going to be magic and fine on June 1st. What it means is that we'll evaluate it as we get closer to that day and we'll either extend it again if if that is what the data and the, and the medical experts in our states are telling us or uh, we'll, we'll lift it and indicate that it's okay to have team activity. So that's, that's all that means. I know the, the confusion was created. Bruce Harrell, who by the way is, is doing an incredible job uh, leading the university through this crisis, which is uh, it, it's so complex, especially at his level. Uh, but he was in a meeting in the morning. That's when the presidents in the Big Ten extended the, the, no, uh, the no required team activity until June 1st. Then in the afternoon, he was at a board meeting, board of regent meeting. And when he was asked a question, his answer uh, was showing optimism, sure, but just confirming the, the June 1st date. And uh, that, got, that created quite a stir for a couple of days. But that's the, that's the answer. I hope that was uh, clear. No, absolutely. That's, that's, uh, that's a good answer. Uh, that said, we're a little over 100 days uh, away from the scheduled start of the football season. Uh, in, your, in your discussions with fellow athletic directors, with President Harold and the NCAA, is that still realistic? Do you expect a full 12-game season? Well, we're certainly planning for it. Uh, you, you brought up an interesting point. Last Friday, I counted the number of days since we had canceled the, uh, the, the basketball tournament. And, uh, and it was 50 some days, it's probably 60 days now. And then I counted how many days until the first football game and realized we still had twice that much time. Uh, and so much has happened since March that, uh, you know, I'm optimistic that so much more can happen between now and September 5th, our first football game. So, um, you know, the, the, the availability of testing has increased significantly and I'm being told is going to increase exponentially even more uh, in the days and weeks ahead. So that's certainly important. That's a good sign. Um, Our state, you know, our governor, which is, again, I think she's doing a terrific job through impossible circumstances, 
she, she seems to be getting closer and closer to, uh, she's already opened up some of the state in a limited fashion. And I know she's watching to, to open up other areas in the state. And so we're watching that closely. And, and then just the hospital's ability to, to handle patients uh, seems to be, at least in, in our area of the state, in, in Iowa City, um, you know, it seems like our, our hospital is doing a, a terrific job and is able to handle the volume. So I think if you just keep adding all those things up, the testing availability, the treatment, I think the treatment, uh, that we're learning more and more about treatment uh, when someone does get the virus. And so I'm not saying we're going to have a, a, a vaccine by September 5th. That would be the home run. But I think, uh, you know, I just keep, I keep hearing positive signs on the medical front that give me, uh, give me hope to have a season, uh, hopefully a full season. But with, then we're planning for, you know, pushing the season back a few weeks if that ends up becoming necessary and or what would it look like if we do have to play a, a, a less than 12 game season. So we're looking at all those things. I, our friend, uh, Gene Taylor at Kansas State, he said the Big 12 was looking at seven scenarios. And I joked with him the other day, I said, well, that, that's pretty impressive. We're looking at, it feels like we're looking at 77 scenarios. <laughs> Well, your comment about accelerated testing uh, leads right into my next uh, question. How about the fans in the stands Labor Day weekend? Might the season begin with an empty Kinnick Stadium? You know, I, I, I hope not. And again, we're planning, uh, you know, the scenario plan A is to have a, have a stadium with fans, whether that's a, a full stadium or it's a partial stadium. Um, that's, that's plan A. And again, to your point, uh, you know, understanding the testing environment at that time, understanding the, uh, the infection rate um, at that time and, and where we sit as a state. But um, if, if all signs keep pointing forward and upward, as they have been, um, you know, by the time we hit September 5th, um, you know, I'm optimistic. Now, uh, we're also planning. Uh, what, would it, what would it look like it would definitely feel and look different, but uh, you know we have to at least have the conversation across the Big Ten, not just at Iowa, of uh, of contemplating a game without fans. Now, if if we're not having fans because it's unsafe for everyone, then we're not going to have a game because that means it would be unsafe for uh, our student athletes and our coaches and and those of us that would be at the game. But if if they're indicating that we could control the safety for a limited group, like a few hundred that would be participating, but we couldn't uh, safely control the, the environment with 70,000, then that would be, and it would be medical personnel that would make that determination, not the athletic director uh, or the football coach. So I guess that's the one possibility of it occurring, but it's more likely needing to occur where if it's safe for the athletes, it's safe for the fans and, and um, away we go. And Kinnick Stadium is at least full of some, some, some cheering uh, crowd. Talking with Iowa Athletic Director Gary Bart. Appreciate Gary's time here on Fight for Iowa, our weekly podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Gary, re regardless of timeline that we just talked about, the revenue streams uh, stream to the athletic department is going to be radically adjusted in the short term. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, budget cuts or wage conformities that you've discussed, uh, if any? Well, well, there definitely will be some. Um, you know, we're our senior staff and our coaches are in regular conversations. Uh, I'm daily working with our CFO and uh, and our senior team and our campus uh, evaluating this year's budget. Uh, as well as starting to project revenue loss for next year's budget. And so our coaches have been terrific. Our staff has been, uh, gets it. And, you know, we're looking at, at cutting uh, fairly significantly several millions of dollars. Uh, I don't have an exact amount yet. And even the amount we come up with will be an estimate um, and just, just preparing. But, it, you know, that, Dolph, that's no different than, uh, you know, I think of all the, the businesses, small businesses across the state, that are closed down right now and they're trying to figure out how they're going to manage their financial hit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our, go our state government is, is experiencing a significant financial hit. The farmers 
Um, our, our campuses, uh, whether it's Iowa, Iowa State, UNI, and all the private colleges, it, that, that concept of, of significant hit to the bottom line is, is not unique to the, uh, the Iowa Athletic Department. And so uh, we're, just, we're working hard to prepare for it, and, and uh, it, it will be significant. Well, we appreciate the updates uh, on the COVID-19 situation where the university is concerned. More Fight for Iowa after this. Marco is one of the largest technology providers in the country specializing in business IT services, copier and printer solutions, and managed and cloud services. Know that we are here and ready to help your business get you through these challenging times. Learn more at marconet.com. That's M-A-R-C-O net. Com. We're brought to you today by Green State Credit Union. Green State Credit Union is with you during these times of uncertainty. Membership is open to all Iowans, so visit greenstate.org, greenstate.org, and learn more about ways we can be of service to you. Green State Credit Union, a proud supporter of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. I want to move on to another subject. Uh, there's been some movement on the name, image, and likeness legislation for the NCA Board of Governors uh, to look at making recommendations. Uh, protecting the recruiting environment is at the forefront and ensuring there's no pay for play and distinguishing college from uh, pro sports or pro athletes. But students would be allowed to make extra money in addition to the room, board, and tuition uh, funded by the scholarships, they would be able to identify by sport and school without the use of conference and school logos. Now, we're still a ways out from the final language, and it remains a very slippery slope, Gary, but how do you view the latest developments? Well, I think the, the, the right side of this discussion is that, you know, we were still using rules that were put in place long before the internet and social media uh, were around. And, and uh, you know, so, so I, I definitely think it was important and is important and healthy to look at uh, the environment in 2020 and, and see about modifying some of the rules. The, the challenge is that um, there is a difference between being uh, a collegiate student athlete and a professional athlete. And, and some of the things that are being proposed and some of the people who uh, are advocates of this to the, to the nth degree, to the most extreme degree, um, probably disagree with what I'm saying and, and indicate that a, you know, a student athlete should be paid like a professional athlete. I disagree with that. So what's being proposed and what's being navigated is there will definitely be a vote in January um, that will be more permissive for student athletes to earn income off their name, image, and likeness. It becomes complicated to separate that from uh, boosters who, who just want to entice somebody to come to their university. You know, we, we've worked so hard. There are people who cheat today, and I guess those people will cheat in the new environment but the vast, vast majority of people do things the right way. And so we just, uh, you know, I'm just skeptical about how to, how to manage and enforce these new rules when they come into play. So I'm, I'm generally for the change uh, in, in some instances, but I'm, I'm not as uh, extreme as some of the people who think that student athletes should be paid a salary and should be professionals. I, I want people who want that lifestyle or that environment to go right to the pros. Let's use the G League, for example. There, I've heard some say that the G League paying a higher uh, salary is going to water down the college basketball game. And, and I completely see, I see it a completely different way. I'm thrilled that the G League is offering a, a nice salary because it's a great place for someone to go if they don't want to go to college. We want people to come to Iowa to play basketball and go to college. If there's no interest in going to college and earning a degree from one of the great universities in the country, then, then I'd prefer they go somewhere else because this is where you do both. So that's, that's a little bit off, off, mark, uh, off message in terms of what you asked, but 
So it's going to be very interesting to see what comes out in January. And uh, it, it will be different. That We just have to accept that. It's going to be different. I just uh, hope that whatever gets uh, voted upon uh, allows student athletes to be, still be students. Yeah, we'll look forward to that uh, legislation forthcoming, or at least the vote in January of 2021. More Fight for Iowa after this. Fight for Iowa is brought to you by Quickstar. Quickstar is committed to serving our communities and ensuring access to all essentials during these challenging times. They'll continue to provide fresh milk, bread, eggs, butter, and more, as well as your hot food favorites, including pizza. Quickstar's got you covered when you want to get in and out quickly and safely back home. Thank you, Quickstar. Today, your internet connection is more important than ever. Extreme, powered by Mediacom, has the speed you need with 99.9% network reliability. Atlantic Coca-Cola Bottling Company is proud to support the local communities in which we live, work, and play. Every day, Atlantic Coca-Cola Bottling Trucks continue to help the food and beverage supply chain by delivering products to retail outlets and those restaurants providing carryout and delivery services. We know Iowans are resilient, and together we are stronger. Now back to the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Talking with Iowa Athletic Director Gary Barta here on Fight for Iowa. One more thing for you, Gary, before we uh, let you go. I, I don't want to assume it's been quiet as chair of the College Football Playoff Committee and terms of that being a priority right now, but I assume you're staying in contact with the group uh, at least weekly? Yeah, yeah, weekly, regularly, uh, having conversations, but um, right now there's not a lot to converse about except um, just waiting until we, you know, we have a better understanding of, of how the season is going to be constructed. So if it's a full season, uh, if it's a pushed back season, or it's a truncated season, then the, the, uh, the, uh, the committee that I, that I sit on uh, will, will take that information and, and then figure out how we're going to evaluate. Because uh, remember, the committee that, I, that I'm involved with is the selection committee. I'm not, uh, I'm not on a committee that's going to determine how the college football season is played, um, it, you know, or when the playoff game is going to occur. But I, but I do work with uh, volunteers, uh, other people on the committee and the staff to select whoever, uh, whoever needs to be in that playoff. So if it's a, if it's a full season, if it's a, a truncated season, we'll, we'll come up with the parameters to select the best teams in the country based on that season. And we'll look forward to having that conversation down the road. Hopefully it's with a full season uh, beginning Labor Day weekend. Uh, my, my prayer begins with uh, health and safety for my family and all my friends and Hawkeye fans. Uh, and then it moves on to uh, let us, let us play a full football season. <laughs> <laughs> for a lot of, for a lot of reasons, but most notably for the student athletes, uh, Gary, uh, always interesting in, in our visits and uh, we'll look forward to uh, another uh, get together here a few weeks down the road. Thanks so much. And hopefully when June first gets here, uh, I can see a big smile on your face. Well, that is the plan. And just, uh, again, for the thousands of Hawkeye fans that uh, continue to tune in to your, your podcasts and, and uh, you know, websites and uh, just trying to crave, uh, it's just, it's, I can feel the energy. Uh, everybody wants, uh, wants to see the Hawkeyes come, come this fall. And so we're working hard and, and uh, the medical profession is more importantly working hard to, to resolve this, this uh, pandemic. That's this week's Fight for Iowa, thanks to Hawkeye Athletic Director Gary Barta. Stay tuned to this podcast site for the next Hawkeye Classic replay. Many feel the victory at Penn State in 2000 put Iowa football firmly on the tracks for what has been a 20-year run of success under Coach Kirk Ferentz. Next week's interview guest on Fight for Iowa will be Hawkeye basketball coach Fran McCaffrey. I'm Gary Dolphin. Thanks for listening.